This episode of the AT Tips Cast is sponsored by Text Help Systems, provider of award winning literacy solutions including Read and Write Gold and Fluency Tutor. For more information, go to www.texthelp.com. That's www.texthelp.com. Welcome to the AT Tips Cast, exploring and investigating the implementation of assistive technology in public schools. I'm your host, Chris Bouguet. This is episode number 78, recorded on June 22, 2011. Cynthia Clark is a teacher in one of the high schools in which I work, and she was telling me about an interesting program she implemented this year with her students who are practicing vocational skills. The students who are doing this activity are integrating commonly found technologies to perform a meaningful service to the staff and community. I thought her idea was rather unique and very easy for others to replicate using technology that's probably already available if you know where to look. I invited her to come on to the AT Tips cast to talk about her ingenious idea, which I'm calling AT Tip 204, Scanning Pictures as a Work Job. Hello, I'm here today with Cynthia Clark, a teacher at Loudoun Valley High School. How are you doing, Cynthia? Good. Good. Thanks. <laughs> so, Cynthia, I saw that uh, you were using this great uh, technique and this great strategy and this piece of technology with your students. Can you tell us a little bit about your students first and what you, what you teach? Okay. I am the ID teacher at Valley, so I teach functional academics and community-based instruction. Cool. And how many students do you have, roughly? We have, well, my case, so it's about five or six, um, but I have some other students that come down to work in my classroom. Mm -hmm. And then part of your program is when you, you said is um, community-based? Yes. A lot of times I'm out in the community um, doing functional work experience skills. And, uh, and even here in the school, we do a lot of work experience skills. Cool. So what are some of those jobs that they might do? Wow. We do, in the school... We do almost all of the recycling, you know, the collecting, the recycling, and the distributing it out. We collect the attendance cards. I have students that work in the cafeteria. I have students that go around. We, we, we um, replace the ink cartridges for our TRT. So when it comes across the trouble ticket that they need a black or color cartridge, I have all the cartridges here, and the students have to go. And that, that just gets them out in the school. So most of the school and all the teachers really know my students because they're, they're some good helpers. So they're out all throughout the school and everyone knows them. Yes, yeah, yes, very awesome. much. Um, now, let me ask, you set up this whole station here in your room. Can you tell, I think it's kind of unique. Can you tell people about it? Yes, it's called the Scanning Picture Project. And uh, last year, my TRT, Keith Hicks, who's now over at Woodgrove, and myself had this idea. We wrote a grant and through our PTO and we got money to buy a scanner, a really nice scanner. And there are scanners throughout the school, too, so other people can do this. Um, now, this is just a really nice scanner, <laughs> you know, since we won the grant. And then we found a computer that is not hooked to the Internet, but it was sitting in some back office here. Mm -hmm. And um, so what we did is he hooked it up. He was the brains behind the, the getting the system together here. And then I created um, a way, you know, we, we did some advertisement. We've even done it in PTO newsletters and throughout the school. And people send us pictures just especially now before digital, you know, it might be your wedding pictures, it might be, you know, well, we've had pictures probably from the 1960s, um, as far back as that. So you mean old, like, paper photographs? Yes, though. the heart, the, you know, ones that people are putting in photo albums. Mm -hmm. And they send us in groups of 50. So we try to keep it organized because I'm trying to make this really, my students, as independent as possible. And so they, we have these manila envelopes with directions of how you put 50 pictures in an envelope. And then some people, you know, they'll give us four envelopes, so we'll have 200 pictures. The reason we, we put 50 at a time is first for security because my students, you know, if you tell me you gave you 50 and then the scanner only shows that they've scanned 48, now we have to troubleshoot and find what we did wrong. Um, if we're looking out of 200, it's a little harder. So we do 50 at a time. So, and then what they do is that when they, and it takes a student, now that they've gotten good, my, some of my higher students, in about 35 minutes, 40 minutes, they can do a folder, which is 50 pictures. And so throughout the day or throughout the week, we'll work on somebody's project, and let's say they gave me four folders, um, four 50 sets. And at the end, what we do is we put them on a disc. And so, you know, they gave us hard copies of pictures, and then they come back on a disc that they can use on their computer, they can... They can use on those. They, they turn it into a computer disk then, and they put it in the digital frame. Awesome. They can make copies, 
and it, it's been great. We have had teachers, a lot of teachers have done it. I've had people in the community do it. I've had, you know, we, we've been very busy, and, and we're the cheapest thing in town. We, uh, i got to check my invoice here. We do charge just because the students are learning. Um, for up to, for every fifty pictures, we charge two fifty two dollars and fifty cents per picture. So no per <laughs> <laughs> per fifty. So you know if you gave me four envelopes, then you know that was ten dollars. Right. So she's completely um, reasonable. But I tell you, it, it's great because uh, you know we have all these jokes. First, what 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 we see here stays here. You know sometimes <laughs> we've had to you know I mean cute pictures, but it's like okay we've seen you know you so at the so. beach <laughs> when you were you know. And, you know, when you were younger, and <laughs> but what, what I always joke about, too, it's funny. The females, when they give us the pictures, they tend to take them out of photo albums and, and mark them and number them so they can put them back in. We've had our first customer um, was, was one of our art teachers who's already retired, and he just brought in a suitcase and just said, pick 500, you know, or something <laughs> oh like that. Gosh. The men tend to have them in just boxes. The women tend to have to take them out of photo albums. But what is neat about this is my students are on the computer and they're doing and they're doing pictures on the computer which so many regular ed students do i mean with facebook with tweeting you know with all this sure people are exchanging pictures all the time so i mean i know this isn't aren't their pictures but they're manipulating pictures um when they scan them they have to really be pay, pay attention to detail because if they put your, put the pictures too close it comes out as one scan mm. and that's usually where we troubleshoot the mistake um, so they always have to look at the scan to make sure the dotted line is around each picture. Um, you know, it's just even, it's a good routine good. that they, you know, they're picking up from one pile, they're putting in the scanner. It, usually if we have too many scanned, that means they put them back in the wrong pile. So it's, it's for students of all levels. Mm -hmm. We, you know, obviously now I have three or four students that can do it independent. I have, you know, a few students that we sit next to when they do it. You know, it takes somebody, but still, they're, they're doing it. And then mm -hmm. we have some that it's almost hand over hand. So, you know, it's great for all levels. Absolutely. It's, it seems like um, there's a lot of attention to detail that needs to go into making sure you have all the steps in place. But yeah. you have it structured and organized in such a way that there's a... Uh, um, there's not a lot that can go wrong because you have so many. Right. And, you know, and if it goes wrong, we delete those and, start you know, we, we start over. Sometimes if we can't find the mistake, uh, we'll start over. But you're right. It's attention to detail. And it's also on-task behavior for 40 minutes or for, like 45 minutes. So, I mean, I don't expect any of my students to get a job scanning pictures. Mm -hmm. But this skill of just attention to detail and being on task is going to help them at any job that Absolutely. they're trying to do. And, you know, I had a a student the other day in my classroom that I don't see as often he's a little higher level than some of my students academically but he had the hardest time with this because between every picture he wanted to say something and you know then he was mixed up and and then you know so it's like even the all range of students need right it's excellent practice for anybody yes absolutely yes um, I think just think it's a great uh, authentic way to to do learning you know so so or to, to practice these work job skills because it's um, like I said, it's authentic. You're re really impacting somebody's life. The mm -hmm. students actually see the the smile on the on the teacher's face, and they say, "Yeah, okay, I have these pictures that I can email off to my sister in California or yeah. whatever." Yeah. And what's neat, we have a little bookkeeping. Not that we're we're very sophisticated in that. It's more of a you know our notebook. But they write out the invoice. We go, we deliver the invoice with the CD and the pictures back. You know, we wait a few days to see if we. So they're learning about business too. Absolutely. A few days. If I don't have money in my box, you know, they go and you know. They check on it and to see how their CD worked, and you know we don't delete anybody until we get the money because because right. <laughs> you know I want to make sure that you know we're not going to have to do it all again. But so it's a whole you know it's running a little business, and so it's been neat. That's awesome. That is awesome. So I think this is something that anyone in any high school could do. I mean, right? I mean, with the scanner, the computers um, said it's just something you kind of found that it wasn't being used. So. Uh, the only thing you needed to have was the burner into it. So you correct, burn correct. The and, and, and like I say, in all schools I have scanners. I just happen to have one in my room, you know, because we, we wrote the, gro the, the grant. And like I say, our, our parent teacher, I got to do a shout out to them because our PTO, they're the ones that gave us the money. But, um, but yeah, I think you can make do Absolutely. even on a little, you know, on a little phrase. And like I say, I have the directions all written out. Um, so sometimes we used to go step by step through the directions and now – you know, as you saw before with one of my students, now he pretty much knows the directions. Right. He used the directions at first, but then he got used to it, and now he's just doing it independently without. Right. Yeah. 
Very cool. Well, thank you, Cynthia, for uh, for sharing this with me and sharing with everyone else in the, in the uh, podcast listening world. Okay. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Cynthia, for participating in the interview and for such an inspired idea. Right around the time we recorded this interview, Cynthia won the 2011 Recognition for Excellence in Supporting Special Education Award in the category of Secondary Teacher from the Special Education Advisory Committee. Way to go, Cynthia. Congratulations. It's well-deserved. Do you think you could replicate what Cynthia is doing? Can you find a scanner, hook it up to a convenient computer, and turn it into a mini-business where students are learning all sorts of valuable and practical life skills? If you think this is something you're going to do, or if you're already doing something similar, or if you know someone else who's doing something similar, or if you know someone else who could be doing this, I'd love to hear all about it. Let me know. No, wait, that's not quite right. Let everyone know. Send me an audio file describing what you're doing. I mean, I'll take an email at attipscast at gmail.com or a comment on the blog at attipscast.wordpress.com, but what I'd really love is a quick audio file I can play in an upcoming show. There are only two episodes left before the AT Tips Cast goes on a bit of a summer slash early fall hiatus, but feel free to contact me anytime. Until next time, may all your interventions be inclusive. May all your strategies be supportive, and may all your old photographs be backed up digitally. <laughs>